how to monitor oxygen saturation in the tissues using simple pulse oximetry. We want to detect hypoxemia. This means low oxygen levels in the blood and is a life-threatening condition that occurs frequently, for example in this case of severe pneumonia. Even the best combinations of clinical signs commonly misdiagnose hypoxemia. Pulse oximetry, however, has been found to correctly identify more patients who have hypoxemia than will be found using clinical signs alone. It is now the accepted standard for detecting hypoxemia. This is simple, non-invasive and usually accurate. With advances in the electronics industry it is now extremely cost-efficient. Here are a few examples of pulse oximeters. Simpler battery-powered devices may be available for less than $100 per unit. The sensors are usually in the form of clips which can be attached to fingers or toes or the lobe of an ear. Some smaller sensors can be attached with adhesive. The sensors have to be cleaned carefully between patients. The sensors are expensive to replace and the most vulnerable part of this equipment. They can easily be damaged, for example if they are allowed to fall onto the floor and staff must help safeguard equipment. What do the oxygen saturation numbers mean? When we measure oxygen levels in the blood using pulse oximetry, we get a percentage figure of the patient's haemoglobin that is oxygenated, and the abbreviation used is SPO2, meaning oxygen saturation by pulse oximetry. The normal range of SPO2 at sea level is 94 to 100%. It is universally agreed that an oxygen saturation of less than 90% mandates the prescribing of oxygen, and the only exception to this may be some patients with certain chronic lung conditions in whom a lower target oxygen saturation may have to be set. This will be discussed in the appendix, but if in doubt, when treating a patient who has a chronic lung condition, ask for advice, but remember, more patients with acute illness will suffer from having too little oxygen and too late, rather than too much. There are conditions where oxygen delivery from the lungs to body tissues is seriously impaired, or where vital organs of the body may be especially susceptible to low oxygen levels. Examples of these conditions include severe anemia, severe heart failure, severe sepsis, shock or brain injury. And in these conditions, many clinicians recommend giving oxygen if the oxygen saturation is less than 94%. A similar target may also be set in pregnancy. In pregnancy there are greater demands for oxygen as well as some reduced compensatory mechanisms in coping with illness such as sepsis, haemorrhage or pneumonia. It's important to understand that even a small reduction in oxygen saturation below 90% can have a critical effect on the oxygen delivery to tissues we only have to go down to an oxygen saturation of 80% for a relatively short period for this to be potentially of great harm to the patient. Here's a reminder of some of the values and what they mean. The normal SpO2 is 94 to 100%. In severe conditions, such as sepsis or injury, many clinicians recommend giving oxygen if the SpO2 is less than 94%. And a similar target may also be set in pregnancy. An oxygen saturation of less than 90% is a universally agreed indication 
that a patient must have supplementary oxygen. An oxygen saturation of 80% is very low and can seriously harm the patient, even for a relatively short period. When treating a patient who has a chronic lung condition, ask for advice about how much oxygen to give, but remember more patients with acute illness will suffer from having too little oxygen or oxygen given too late, rather than from receiving too much.